Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another production of Revelation in Focus. Uh, greetings to those across Guyana and online. We continue with apocalyptic justice. Last uh, time we would have discussed uh, Revelation 16, uh, chapter 16. We were at the fourth uh, plague. Now we are at the fifth. Uh, backing up a bit, uh, apocalyptic justice basically uh, God's wrath against sin and evil against the workers of iniquity primarily the devil and his angels mm -hmm. uh, it is not a place that man is supposed to find himself in terms of God's wrath poured out without mixture God's wrath without mercy man finding himself in that predicament has everything to do with his choice uh, we cannot claim to follow Christ claim to be servants of Jehovah and want to live how we please uh, we cannot treat God as though he is a wishy-washy uh, spoil you kind of parent and um, you do what you like and still get to heaven you hear all these strange theories and teachings ladies and gentlemen we are going to continue this discourse and as it is penned in the apocalypse uh, the prophetic writ by john the apostle we want to continue with the fifth plague all right the fifth plague just before we go into the reading of the word, uh, let's bow our heads as we pray. Great Jehovah, we ask that you will bless this word. Yes. Sanctify the vessels. Yes, Lord. So that all within the hearing of this word will sense the urgency of the time of that we live yes. and will give in will give heed to the Spirit of God Amen. so that no one in the hearing of this word will be found wanting in the judgment yes. this is our asking that your word will not return into you void but will accomplish that which you send it out to do we thank you and we praise you through the mighty name of Prince Emmanuel Amen, Amen. I'm yours truly, Cleveland Hudson, Elder Union, and Elder Mentor is with us in studio. Uh, I will read for you verse 10 to 11. We'll try to, as much as possible, to see how far we can go as time permits. Revelation 16, verse 10. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. And his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of the pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. I'm going to stop here. Uh, Elder Mentor, Elder Union, we are at the fifth plague. We would have told our viewers that the plagues, has everything to do with God's wrath against the rebellious, yep. those who rejected his salvation. Mm. And more than that, those who are persecuting his church, mm. the systems, the institutions, the offices, etc. Now we've gone to the fifth plague, and we are seeing here that this is a vial direct on the seat of the beast. We want to talk about this beast and this seat of the beast. Who are we talking about? Yeah, um, well, the beast is the revived medieval church or the mm -hmm. papacy. Mm -hmm. uh, remember in 
Revelation 13, 3, mm -hmm. it speaks about this beast receiving a deadly wound. Mm -hmm. And it was healed. Okay. So what we're looking at now is the time of its healing. Mm -hmm. When it's completely healed and it's regained power. Mm -hmm. The wound, was it losing power? Mm -hmm. uh, civil and, and, and ecclesiastical power mm -hmm. to, to rule over people. Mm -hmm. And to do what they want. To, and using the state to enforce its dogmas, etc. And this second. was done. You're saying losing, which means... They had the power. They had the power for 1260 years. 1260 years. Just wanted to remind our viewers to stitch that in. Yes. So you're saying this is a resurgence, this a is recurrence again, exactly. according to the prophecy. Exactly. Continue. Right, because this happened in 1719 when General Bertie of Napoleon's army went into Rome and captured the Pope and made him a prisoner. Mm -hmm. All right, and so that power that they wielded for 1260 mm -hmm. years was broken. Mm -hmm. But Remember, we said, Revelation 13, 3 said that his, his daddy wound was healed, mm -hmm. which means that he was well again. Mm -hmm. So, here he comes up now, and this is the second stint at the helm of life of the world, mm -hmm. and God say, oh, this one is for you. Mm -hmm. Like what he did to Pharaoh. Direct assault. A direct assault on his seat, on his dominion, mm -hmm. because the kingdom is unlike what it's claiming to be the kingdom of light, it is really the kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right? And God say, you love darkness? Well, look, handle this. And this seat here as well speaks to all of its authority. Yeah. And um, claim to have divine authority. This is now going to be exposed that it's all been false all along. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do with God. Nothing to do with heaven. Yeah. This is the dragon yeah. working through an agency yeah. that he has set up. Elder Union, uh, we continue the discourse here. Uh, his kingdom was full of darkness. Let's talk about this kingdom <coughs> of darkness. Um, before I make any comment, you, know, mm -hmm. you gentlemen were speaking, mm -hmm. and um, you know, uh, I was thinking about how how, 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 how accurate mm -hmm. the prophecy has been, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or is rather, because if you've been following us for any length of time, you realize that, I often say this, it's possible that as a preacher or a Bible expositor, mm -hmm. you could look my two Mark, Luke, John, Isaiah and them things. But this book, Revelation, you can't fluke it. <laughs> because that which verifies the book and validates the book is history. And, and, and it's incredible mm -hmm. how a book written 2,000 years ago is so accurately fulfilled today. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? So this is what gives, gives the book power. So the kingdom of the beast simply means uh, that uh, uh, um, except for the small remnant mm -hmm. that refuses to follow the, the, the dictates and the laws and the coercion from the beast. The rest of the world. He controls the whole world. <laughs> you see? Uh -huh. But is this remnant that is like a thorn in the flesh? And that's why Revelation 12 17 says, and the dragon was wrought with the woman yeah. and went to make more with the remnant. This little remnant. And, and, and he's enraged. Mm -hmm. This little group of people. Mm -hmm. But the remnant say, we prefer to die. Mm -hmm. So, so the remnant then is the is this small group that refuses to go along with with, with, with the doctrines and whatever it is of the beast, which is the amalgamation of the rest of the world. So that's it. Right? Because and and, 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 and this kingdom is in darkness because they, 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 they do not obey the word of God. They do not follow God's word. The, the psalmist said, the entrance of thy word give, give it, it light. light. That's right. And, 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 and they're not practicing what God wants them to practice. And, and right now we see here that God is sending a very strong message in this fourth and fifth plague mm -hmm. to these people who dare to observe the venerable day of the sun. Mm -hmm. In the fourth plague, mm -hmm. he tells the sun to turn up the heat, mm -hmm. scorch them. Yeah. And the sun God cannot do anything. He cannot intervene no, no, no. And, and beg for his people. Because remember they have 
um, blisters all over their skin. And when the heat increase, now they don't have water, the Lord take away water. So it blisters all over the skin and no water to soothe it. The heat torn up is misery. Now God saying, here, I'm going to show you that nature serves me. Mm -hmm. And he turned to the sun and he said, you hide your face until I tell you come back. And he black out utter darkness and the sun God can't do anything and force his way through and bring back light. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I want to ask a question here or say something. Um, there are those who might say that um, this ain't gonna happen. But if you check the Book of Revelation, what we've covered so far, brethren, folks, it's like 95% we've already proved beyond the shadow without historically mm -hmm. that it has happened, it, it yep. has taken place. Yep. And if you've been following this program for any length of time, we are, we, look, we ain't coming with suppositions and maybe. This is ya, you, ya, me. <laughs> so all I'm saying, there's no reason to doubt that these things are going to happen. Because, eh, 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 okay, let's be reasonable. Let's say 75%, all you said before, has happened. This, and it's proven historically, this can happen as well. Yeah. So we need to take warning. It would be foolish. Yeah. So, and, and this is the part that I find, this is, this is maybe we can coin it this mm -hmm. way, the audacity or presumptuousness of sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In that, back on Mount Sinai, God's voice mm -hmm. like thunder, mm -hmm. His glory is causing the mountain to run to run away. Mm -hmm. And smoke is ascending from the mountain because it's. I mean, it cannot deal. It. The mountain can cannot stand the Creator's presence. Mm. And you got some folk worshiping a calf right there. This is the presumption of sin. Now mm -hmm. you've seen the flood. You've seen the biblical account of Sodom and Gomorrah. Yet you are going to end the fires. Say now that all oh, those things happen but that don't mean that God gonna do it again this is the presumption of sin we're talking mm -hmm. about. And, and then let me tell you something you how it's so dreadful mm -hmm. it's so presumptuous like you said mm -hmm. these folks saw their own personal up uh, and up close miracle mm -hmm. when God destroyed the Egyptians mm -hmm. they traveled through the Red Sea on dry land yes. and the Egyptians tried to follow mm -hmm. and God wiped them off the earth completely before mm -hmm. that they had plagues and all the like Be all because Pharaoh dared to defy God and said, Who is the Lord that I, that I should obey a voice and let Israel go? Yeah. I know that the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. And God show him for your big mouth, I'm going to show you something. And these guys had all of that right up close and personal. And, and still, sin still had its way. The, the power of unbelief and the stubborn nature of sin. That's what we're seeing. <laughs> no, um, yeah. I'd like to make a point here. Uh, 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 well, I'll ask a question. Two, are we at a time in the world of spiritual darkness? Well, again, the prophecies are true. <laughs> in the last days, mm -hmm. perilous time shall come. Yeah. And the whole host of it in Timothy here. Yeah. Yeah. And Second so Timothy 3, 1 to 5. We are yeah. seeing it playing out now. Yeah. Uh, lovers of, of pleasure. Pleasure, like, uh, more than Haters lovers of, of those. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, so, so, no, here, so here we go. I was reading an article just a few days ago. Mm -hmm. it, it, uh, the article deals with church attendance. Mm -hmm. And I show you in Europe, church attendance is down to like 15%. And I remember years ago, I, 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 I was reading an, uh, you know, an article in a magazine. And the, 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 the topic is of what is has the sun set on the empire and to show you where all these big cathedrals that were built in medieval times they're empty mm -hmm. some of them they got to rent them out remember the days when we were small we have to go to study school or the Sabbath school whatever mm -hmm. yeah, it's done yeah. so what we find is, 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 is a, 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 a great reduction in godliness so hence what can happen spiritual darkness yeah. Brethren, you know something? Sometimes I don't look at the news at all. 
because the news tells you to some extent the condition in the world. And you get it now. We get technology. Well, folks, the technology blows me away. You see this thing here? Eh? I know nothing about it. It's too hard. So we get technology, we get science, we get everything. But morally, socially, spiritually, on, on, we, on decay. We retrogress in terribly. On yeah, and, 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 and the world is like that because of spiritual compromise, you know. Mm -hmm. Because over the years and because of mm -hmm. this power that dare to defy God mm -hmm. in God's own name. That's mm -hmm. right, yeah. So what we have is symbolic and literal. Yeah. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Where there's gross darkness, ignorance, the, the persistence of ignorance, mm -hmm. yep. of truth, uh, and also literal darkness, yeah. where the glory of God has departed. Mm -hmm. yeah. What you have now is the nature rebelling against you yeah. itself, you know? Obeying uh, God so and rebelling definitely. against now, you. Now, before you go mm -hmm. on, a text comes to mind, Isaiah 6, 2. Darkness shall cover the earth and ghost darkness the people. Now here they see. The prophecy shows clearly mm -hmm. that Christ is supposed to come. Christ's second coming is near. Mm -hmm. Now, the Bible tells us in the fullness of time God sent forth his son, etc. etc. Mm -hmm. When Jesus came the first time. He couldn't come earlier or later. It was right on time. Yes. The earth was full of darkness and, 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 and the men had turned to beasts, etc. So Jesus came right on time. Mm -hmm. God sent him. And he's going to be right on time again. again. But here, listen. There's a subject I'd like to discuss, but not now, to show you where you could know when it's near. Yes, of course. You see? So, 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 so this is no joke, brethren. This is the real thing. Yes. You see? Definitely. So, just as Jesus came the first time, when, when, when it was right, the earth was full of darkness. Yeah. He's going to come again. Mm -hmm. And you could see, today I was watching the news last night or the, last night. Mm -hmm. I felt like I get vexed with the, with the wife or the child mother. He chops you up and he chops the little baby too. This is this is the time we're in. Oh, you chop the little baby boy. What the baby do you? We're, we're yeah. uh, rough, the, the, man. Po, rough. Uh, you know, God did rough, say, man. God did say, my spirit will not have the strength mm. of men. And you're seeing the evidence of it. And here, here, mm -hmm. I want to throw a challenge to the very public. Well, uh, an assignment rather. I want you to read. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 5 and verse 13. And tell me if that doesn't mirror our age. Dead on, brethren. Yep, yep. Dead on. You can't go wrong. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You see. Now, continuing verse 11, mm -hmm. we are told that they blaspheme the God of heaven. Now, I find this so, again, we're talking about the, 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 the presumption of sin. Mm hmm you're seeing all of this going on you have come to the place where you've realized that you've been deceived that those who claim to be your spiritual leaders and, and let me state something in here viewers this is not the time to depend on what you hear from the pulpit no. you need to be a seeker of truth yeah and i want to guarantee you God is unequivocally clear that he will guide you into all truth. He says, if you seek me with your whole heart, you'll find me. The problem is, are you really seeking for truth? Or are you complacent and lethargic? You just go to church and depend on what you hear from the pulpit. Yes, That's not enough. Because we've come to a stage according to the apocalypse here, mm -hmm. that these folk will come to a place where they will realize they've been deceived. Yep, but here, but too late shall be the cry. Sorry, you're making a point that now that um, they blaspheme. Yes. They can't do otherwise because this is post. Yes. Probation. Probation. Uh, yes. So you can't do... Of course. The it's not time for repentance is repent. gone. Right. Yes. It's not so that's the only good blaspheme now because you're fully controlled by the devil and, and, and God has withdrawn his... He's offer mercy. 
sanctuary closed off in heaven. No more salvation. You're gone. So, so they can't do otherwise. So even the try to ask. There's no, nothing to no, ask for. There's no impression to ask exactly. because the Holy Spirit is exactly. gone. Exactly. You know you're raising a very exactly. Holy Spirit point. gone. Exactly. Uh, how far is far? The unpardonable sin we're talking about. Yeah. At what point, if you continue to reject the voice of the Spirit, at what point you would have reached a reprobate mind? Yeah. And the same Bible, in, 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 uh, I think it's the same Timothy, talks about sending strong delusions yeah. that yeah. you believe a lie. Yeah. You have a situation where people have been left to their own impulses, their own desires, and there's no more Holy Spirit to plead. Uh, Christ says, Behold, I stand the door enough. There's no longer knocking at door because the door of mercy has been shut. Yeah. Probation has been closed. He that is filthy, let him be filthy too. And if we want to know what that would be like, like what you were talking yeah, about yeah. there, that they are locked over there. Mm -hmm. Let us look back at Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. God says he's going to harden Pharaoh's heart. Mm -hmm. But you think God actually did anything to Pharaoh? No. No, you know Pharaoh would All him. God simply do, the Holy Spirit just didn't convict Pharaoh whenever God dealt with him. The Holy Spirit didn't do anything. Remember now, the Holy Spirit is there to bring conviction to our hearts. Mm -hmm. Now, Pharaoh's heart was already hard because mm -hmm. which man can look at little children and kill them, murder them? It you got to have a hard heart. Exactly. So all the Holy Spirit did, he didn't work with Pharaoh. He didn't say, man, learn from that. And thing. all God simply do, it stood by and allowed Pharaoh to be Pharaoh. And all so could have come out words, of him was more evil. In other words, extension of grace ceased. Exactly. Now this is, look, folk, we are lingering here because this is really serious. Yes. Um, we have a number of Bible characters to look at when the Spirit of God stopped pleading with them. King mm. Saul. Mm. King Saul was alive but his probation closed. He was a living dead, basically. Mm. Balaam. Yep. Um, Judas. Um, Ananias and Sapphira. And notice, we are looking at both covenants here. The old with King Saul and all of them, mm -hmm. and, and Balaam, and the new with Ananias and Sapphira and Judas. You see what's going on there? <laughs> yep. So it's the same God, I the Lord, I change not. Do not if you continue God. to reject the voice of the Spirit of God, mm -hmm. there's going to come a point God is going to stop pleading with you. It's as simple as that. Yep. No. Please help me here. I don't know if you can make a comparison. Mm -hmm. Remember Noah, mm -hmm. Noah preached for 120 years and then the time came when the animals started going to the ark and so, right? Mm -hmm. Was there a period of time of probation before the door closed and etc. Et 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 no, 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 I know that. After the animals started going and so, right? <laughs> that stay wasn't enough. <laughs> no, was there a, a, like a couple of days or something mm -hmm. or a week or yeah, something? Yeah, God gave them one week respite. And they, and, and, they, and they still Before, right. they, 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 they still won't respond so to God. So we've come full circle until God shut the door. Yeah. And, when, and that, that shows again. When God closes the door, that's it. That's right. right. And he said it. So we come full circle back to those <laughs> days. Yeah. Yeah. So continuing, um, what we have is... Let's talk about some of these deceptions. Because we're saying that their leaders deceive them. And today, we have all kinds of deceiving teaching yeah. coming from pulpits. Just recently, a famous preacher was talking about absent from the body, present to the Lord. He's using that scripture to say that when you die, you, you don't really die. Part mm -hmm. of you, your soul, exists and goes with God in heaven. Yeah. And Folk, this is a lie from the pit of hell. Satanic doctrine. This thing was 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 raised its ugly head in Eden. Exactly. When Satan attempted to have our, uh, Adam and Eve doubt God by saying, mm -hmm. "Didn't God say that you're gonna die? Well, you will not surely die." Mm -hmm. And it is that lie continuing down through time. In various forms. Yeah, purgatory and all these purgatory things are part of it. with the medieval church. Yeah. And now we have apostate Protestantism telling their members that 
you are somewhere around the, the throne. throne of God. Mm -hmm. So that even if you live in your life, in great, disobedience great to Christ, <laughs> you still somehow are transported to heaven and you are somewhere around the throne. Folk, folk, the word of God makes it clear in that very day that a man dies, his thoughts perish. Yeah, yeah. You don't have anybody living after death. Immortality is given when Christ comes. Yeah. Look at the scripture. For we do not know what we shall be, but when he shall appear, we shall be as he is, for we shall see him as he is. For the Lord himself shall be sent from heaven with a shout, and the voice of the archangel in the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise forth, and this mortal shall put on immortality, yeah. and this corruptible incorruptible immortality will not be given before Christ comes. Yeah. So that that doctrine, folk, is not scriptural, mm -hmm. and there are a number of other doctrines that are not scriptural. Yeah. Okay. For example, telling you that the laws done away with, folk, every kingdom, every citizen has requirements that keep that measure behavior and standards. If you take away the law, what are we going to measure right and wrong by? We're going to have chaos. And chaos. so folk, these are the deceptions of the last days. You're in a church that is telling you that you can live in disobedience and defiance to God. You're still going to go to heaven? Impossible. What kind of church is that? Um, that's what we so have to folk, do. look, um, we got to wrap up. Oh, yeah. And, 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 you know, it's a good note to end. There's, there's, there's plenty more to come. <laughs> good note to end. Yeah. Yeah. Elemento, you want to close with a closing statement and, and then... Yes, um, so I we, we just want to remind you that God has, Christ has made an appeal in Revelation 14, verse 9 and 10, many talk about beware of receiving the mark of the beast because God's wrath will be poured without mixture and you, you can escape this. You don't have to wait until this comes on you. You can accept Christ today follow his word and be saved in his kingdom. Eternal God and Father, we are indeed grateful that you've kept us alive and you've called us to this great task of, 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 of teaching the final message from the final book for this last generation. Yes. We ask you to protect us and guide us from the forces of evil. In Jesus' name. Amen.